Hey, it's Harcourt from Play, and this is the second video in our Play 101 course. This video is on layout, and you can't talk about layout and play without talking about stacks. So let's dive right in. On my canvas, I have this stack, and a stack is a container that holds other objects, like elements, element groups, components, and even other stacks. One of the main properties of a stack is its direction. So you can see I have a vertical stack right now that has three SF symbols inside it. And these three SF symbols are positioned one on top of the other vertically. And if I try to move one of these to a different place in this stack, you can see it's just gonna change the order of it within its other siblings, not gonna change its position. The same is true for a horizontal stack. So I could change the direction to be horizontal and these objects will now be placed one after the other horizontally. You can also change this to be a Z stack, which will have all the objects placed right on top of each other. But in a Z stack, you can change their position inside the stack because it's freeform as opposed to a V stack or an H stack. I'm gonna move this out of the way for now and we'll come back to this primary action stack a little bit later. Next, let's add some text elements to our page to begin creating our stack. So I'm going to add a text element through the add panel in the top left corner. And I can bring this text element and just place it on my canvas. Now, the first thing I wanna do is add some different color so you can see it a bit easier. And now I can adjust the properties of this text element using my context bar right here. The first is the, fam the font family, which I don't wanna change. I can adjust the weight, I can adjust the size, I can adjust the styling of this, the design, if it's system font, and I can also change the color's opacity. So maybe I want this to be 45%, so it's a little bit less prominent. I can now take this and I can either hold down my option key to duplicate it, I can press command D to duplicate it, or I can use my text keyboard shortcut, just press T and then I can place a text element on my page. In my duplicated text element, I can change these properties now from the element settings panel as opposed to the context bar. So I can change the font, I can change this weight, can change the size again, Maybe I want this fill to be 100%. Now I have these two styled text elements and I can go ahead and add the text in. So. Now that these are ready to go, I can select both of them by just dragging across the canvas and press Command G to group them together in a stack. And now I can adjust some of the other properties of a stack. So for example, I can change the alignment to be center I could also, if my stack was a little bit bigger, adjust the distribution. So it could be center, start, or space between. Lots of options here. I'm gonna do start for now, and then I'm going to double click to set this height to auto, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now we have this stack, and now let's add an SF symbol onto our canvas. So I'm gonna place this right above this current stack. And again, I'm gonna change the background color to be white so we can see it better. And these properties are very similar to the properties you'll be able to change for a text element. You can change the size, you can change the weight from regular to semi-bold, bold, medium, and you can change the scale. You can also change the content inside here by double clicking. And then you'll see this SF symbol panel where you can search through all of the SF symbols that, off that Apple provides and you can select any of them and use it in your design. You can also change the rendering mode. So right now it's monochrome, but if I wanted to change it to hierarchical instead, you could see that there's now varying levels of opacity within our SF symbol. This is all native, pretty cool. Next, you can adjust the bounding box for this SF symbol as opposed to this SF symbol itself. So I can change the width and height using these width and height sliders. Maybe I can make it 56 by 56. I can also adjust the appearance. So I can change this background color, not of the icon, but of the whole container to be pink. And I can adjust this corner radius by dragging the slider to my desired corner radius. Clicking on the right side of that slider allows me to turn on continuous corners, which again makes this more native. Now we can bring back in this primary actions and let's use what we've learned to style this. So I'm gonna turn this into a horizontal stack. I'm gonna remove the background color to make it clear. I already have it centrally aligned, but I want to distribute it in the center. And now we can talk about the width and height. So we already changed this SF symbol to have a width and height of 56 but I can also make this responsive sizes as well. So in that same layout slider, if I clicked on the right side of that width slider, I can choose fill instead. Now this is gonna fill up any unused space in the parent that this is inside. 
because this action stack is just on the canvas, its width, its fill width is going to be the same width of the device that we have selected. So as we change that device slider, the size using fill will also change. And you can also use auto. So for the height, let's click on that right side and select auto now. This is going to hug anything inside the stack. So right now I have these SS symbols, which have a height of 44. So my, action, my stack that has all of them inside it will also have a height of 44. If I added a bit of padding inside here, now the auto height is going to account for both that height of the children plus the padding. If I wanna remove that padding, I can click on this green dot on the left side and it's gonna reset that back to default. So now that I have all of these created, I can select all of them and press Command G to group them together. And again, let's try styling this together. So let's align it to the center. Let's add a little gap spacing, maybe 32 points. Let's add a background color. And now let's add some padding to the whole thing. Maybe we add 16 points of padding or 24 pounds of padding to our whole stack. And now we can either go down to the appearance panel to adjust the corner radius like we just did, or we can do it on the canvas by just dragging the corners in similar to a tool like Figma. So we can make that 16 as well. So now we have our basic stack and it's good to go. But what if we wanted an object inside here that does not follow the relative positioning? Let's say we wanted an SF symbol that's in this top right corner. You can do that using pin too. I'm gonna select my full stack and I'm just gonna paste it inside here. And you can see by default, it's added to the bottom of this positioned relatively. But if I wanna take it out of that relative position, I can go into my position panel here and click on any point in this nine point grid. If I place it in that top right corner, it's going to be placed there. And you can see that the auto height of this full stack changed to no longer include that SF symbol. If I wanna change the position, I can adjust the offset X and Y values, or I can add a little bit of margin here. So this is now pinned to the parent, but what if I wanted something to be pinned to the page and it would stay in the same position no matter what happened on the page? Well, let me take that same SF symbol here and go onto the page itself. And now I can paste this. It's gonna be in that top corner. And if I scroll my whole page, you can see that SF symbol is scrolling with it and it's gonna be out of view soon. But if I instead take that SF symbol and now I pin it to the page, I just turn this, flip the switch on. Now, as I scroll on my full page, you can see it stays in position no matter what else is happening. Now let's continue to update the appearance of this stack. In the appearance panel, we can add a border on here. So automatically clicking on the right side will add a border and you can click again to adjust it. So maybe I want this to be a white border that is 45% visible. That's the opacity there. I can also add a shadow the same way. And I can also add some layer blur. I have this gradient. This is just a stack that has a linear gradient on it and it's already pinned to the top. So I'm gonna just drag it into my stack here. You can see it's pinned to the top of my whole stack. Now, before we get into the blur, I wanna show you something about Z depth. You can see right now that this gradient is on top of these other objects. And that's because it has a Z depth of 10, but I can place it below these objects instead just by removing that Z depth. So you can see now as it's zero, we are now beneath this SF symbol as opposed to on top of this SF symbol. Now let's continue talking about the blur. So with the gradient still selected, I can click on blur, add a layer blur, and then just adjust this radius to make it more blurred or less blurred. So maybe I just have it at 60 for now. So it's still pretty pink. So now I can use my offset X and Y, specifically my offset Y, to move this off the page. So maybe I just wanna move it negative 80. And now it's just a little bit of pink at the top. So now we have our card finished. The last thing we need to do is just rename it. So I have the name here. I'm gonna double click on that and I'm just gonna type in my new name, summary. And lastly, I'm gonna turn it into a component. So in the context bar here, I can click on create component, which is this pink icon. When I do that, it's now turned into a component so we can use this throughout our design. In the next video, we're gonna talk more about components, specifically how to create instances and states of this component. We'll see you in that video.